Welcome to episode three of Smartland's Get to Know podcast. Today, sitting with me is Jerome Henderson. Hey, what's going on, man? Jerome, how you doing today? Wonderful. Um, I love that we're doing this. Me too. Me like, too. This we're, is so cool. Well, everybody who works with Smartland will will get to know who who's under our roof here. Okay, that sounds great. What is your uh, what's your role here? At Smartland? I am the Smartland maintenance supervisor. Maintenance supervisor. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, what what does maintenance supervisor entail? What's your day to day? Oh, day to day, my day to day. Um, I work hand to hand with the property managers, so I work in tandem with them to make sure everything maintenance related repairs are in a timely fashion. Um, tenant contact, investor contact. Uh, one thing I really love about being a maintenance supervisor here at Smartland is that I'm involved in every facet of each department. So I work with everybody real closely, and I really love that. It keeps me feeling like I know what's going on. Yeah, I, I'm sure that really helps. You're able to answer a lot of questions around right. around the company if you're if you're working with everybody. It makes it not boring. Yeah, <laughs> every day is exciting. Absolutely, or or stressful. <laughs> yeah, or stressful. Um, but it's a different kind of stress. There's, I know we've all had those positions where the stress is overbearing. It's just weighing you down. It impacts your home life. I don't have that type of stress here, and that's what makes me love it. The stress level here is just the workload. Sometimes you can be over, feel overwhelmed, but not overwhelmed, defeated. Yeah. I've never felt defeated here at Smartland. I've always, the stress from the day before makes me go into the next day. Absolutely. I feel like maybe mitigating that stretch, stress is due to maybe some of the systems you guys have mm. set up and processes here at Smartland. Right. Can you go more into that and see what systems uh, have, have made you been able to mitigate the stress and not leave every day with, uh, with as many questions as you had coming in? Using every tool that possible, um, from email pause options to just being coordinated and taking the time to manage yourself it helps me manage the guys it helps me manage what i do so just taking the time taking the time to breathe and say hey i need a break i need to get up and walk around the office i need to think it out air it out um i love that's that's what really helps me deal with hey oh my god the phone's ringing five times and both phones are ringing so it really makes it more i don't it's not really stress it's exciting <laughs> it's really exciting, um, and that's what keeps me here. Awesome. You you mentioned uh, you know two facets of communication, or two two tunnels of communications that you utilize, and one's to tenants and one's to investors. Mm -hmm. How does your approach to both of those uh, communication channels change? They don't. They don't. And okay. that's what I that's what I really like about finding my niche in that communication. When I first got here at Smartland and I realized that I was going to be doing a lot of investor contact, I kind of, you know, subconsciously geared it different to be whether it be more professional or and through feedback from investors is, hey, man, be straightforward and transparent with me. Let me know what's going on. Talk to me day to day. Don't worry about the logistics so much. Okay. And that helped me get way more comfortable. And I found out that talking to the tenant, same thing. Hey, what's going on? I'm a human. Um, I like to remind the tenants that I'm a consumer as well. I'm a tenant as well. So I get it and I understand and that really helps me in what I do. Okay, yeah. Um, I have, I'm sure when you're dealing with, with tenants or, or investors, most of the times that you have to come into the picture is probably when they're a little bit frustrated. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, so Every time. what ways have you, you know, figured out to de-escalate certain situations? Using the tactic from my personal life. Okay. I do not focus on problems. I'm solution-based. Um, and every problem I create is an opportunity. There's no such thing as problems. It's just an opportunity to figure something out. So as long as we look at it like that, I know that it can be frustrating when you need an answer or feel ignored. I've been there. I've been that guy. And that's what I mean when I say I'm consumer first. I'm, I'm, I go to the same store as our tenants go to. I have the same rent to pay as our tenants have to pay. So I get it but we can't focus on what's wrong and find out how to fix it. So I just go into a straight solution. Sometimes it's good to let people vent those frustrations though. Absolutely. Let them get it out, man. We all need it. So it's nice that you understand that. So you don't feel like, like a punching bag all the time or, you, no. or at least you allow no. it to happen for a little bit because um, human nature is, 
in your eyes, maybe better to, for people to let those emotions out? Yes. And that's really how I go about it. I take, I go from experience first and I apply my life experience to mm -hmm. someone else's situation every time. So I put myself in their position, and if it was me, how would I want to be talked to? How would I want to be handled? What communication would I like? What follow-up? Um, that's what I like about everybody here at Smartland. We are personable with what we do here. So it helps a lot. I think of my position with the tenants and the communication with the tenants very valuable and the most valuable aspect because I'm the transition from frustration to happy. Frustration to, thank you, Jerome. Frustration to, hey, I'll send in a card to you and the property manager because I'm really relieved that this got done before it, it got cold outside. So that's the reward. Okay, definitely. So you have a little bit of reward-based incentive for oh, you when it comes man. to getting satisfaction out of investors or tenants? Yes. My position is so selfish. I, it, it's all for me, bro. Um just like you just said, getting the satisfaction from the investor. Hey, I appreciate how much you're on top of it. Thank you for being so mitigating the situation throughout to the completion to the tenant saying, thank you for showing me that you care. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I've had tenants call who didn't really have a maintenance repair need. It's just, hey, Jerome, maybe one day I can get a different color in the living room. I don't know about this or that. And they just want to talk. They just want to feel like they're not paying their mortgage or their rent to a robot, to a machine. Absolutely. I think talking to a human goes a long way, especially long in this way. business. Yes. Especially in 2024, the age of technology and taking over, I mean, cameras everywhere, uh, self-checkout. So the more personal aspect that we can offer, I think that's the reward. We're, it's really going to pay off. What what led you to Smart Lens? Walk <laughs> me through your, your professional history and, and how you ended oh, up here. Oh, my professional history. What led me to Smart Lens is having a very diverse background. So before Smart Lens, I was a commercial driver over the road. Um, did that for six years, Class A CDL. So I was the semi-truck guy pulling up to your dock, unloading it all day, you know, that guy. Did you drive a Peterbilt? <laughs> don't get me started on those. So <laughs> Peterbilts, I don't like. Okay. I'm a Kenworth guy. Okay, dive into that a little bit for me. Oh, what, dude. What's the difference for you? Uh, the gear shifting. The gear shifting. That's actually what took me out. Trucks like Peterbilts took me out of commercial driving because I ended up being diagnosed with arthritis of the spine. Um, nothing major, still have all my mobility, but the weight of a clutch. So the clutching the truck, you have different weight capacities. Peterbilt, you got to put some oomph into your leg. You got to you gotta stomp on that clutch. Kenworth was a smoother transition. Yeah. So, but Peterbilt, guys, companies like those because you get the longevity on the road. Hmm. Okay. For me, not so much. So... Coming out of that and having the back condition and the diagnosis, I fell back to my plan B. I've always worked in maintenance. I had some field tech positions. I've always done repairs. I've always worked with my hands. I've always been the hands-on guy. So came out of commercial, came off the road, applied here at Smartland, and the rest is history. So when you applied here at Smartland, was it for your position that you're working now? No, sir. So. Good question. Good question. I applied here at Smartland to be a maintenance coordinator. Okay. Um, to roll into the maintenance coordinator lead is, was my desire at the time. I got to know Paul Coso, who was here at the time, and he let me know, hey, this is what we have. This is where we want to go. Can you help? Yes, sir. So we met, sat down, met with him and Val, and it was just like we had known each other for years. We talked and talked and talked. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, crap, this is an interview. Hey, tell us about your work experience. What can you do? Um, got into me being very familiar with systems, all types of systems. I'm a very analytical thinker, so I can break down just about any program. Use it for a little while. I can tell you how to use it. I can teach it. They found that out, and it's been at Folio since. Um, nice. Got familiar with our system that we use, and advanced from there um i update every time the system updates fantastic um so i mean you said your roles developed it, it didn't seem like yeah. you were necessarily managing people the second you got here no. it was more like you were developing systems mm -hmm. learning them deciphering them 
Um, so now that your roles transitioned more into a, a management aspect, what are some really big challenges that you faced or face on the daily with, uh, with managing people? The same, I didn't expect to have the same aspect that I expect from my tenants. So I know that anytime either one of my phones ring, it can be a different personality. It can be a different interaction. It can be a happy person. It can be a very upset person. Didn't expect that from the text as much. I, I really expected more of a everyday, same vibe, same, you know, mission, walk in, hey, boss, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Um, and they really opened my eyes to know you have to deal with our emotions too. You have to tend to us too. We, we're, we're part of the team. We're here. We go through things. We have a personal life. And guess who's the first to sign up to hear it? And it was just a shock, like, oh, man, I'm thinking he's coming in this morning, getting assignments, getting keys, and he's out on the road. No, sir. Here's the frustration of last night and the work order that I got at 10 at night. Oh, okay. So it really helped me understand that be personable on every aspect from A to Z. Keep that personal aspect. Keep understanding. And that really snapped me back because, like I said before, I'm a really intuitive person. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I can apply this to every facet of my job. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so with with your team, I mean, would you, you say you're you're the head coach here. So you have to know how to coach certain players certain ways. Right. And and how to how their reactions are gonna be and how that's gonna affect their work uh throughout the day. Yeah. Would you and say? that helps me grow. Um another aspect that's very rewarding that I didn't expect. Managing the techs helps me be a manager, better manager of myself. Understanding the accountability I hold to them, the responsibility having things set days prior so these guys can get out there and know what they're doing, be fully knowledge, fully aware. It's like, hey, you got less time to slack, bro. Your breaks have to be a little shorter sometime. Your days have to be a little longer sometime. Someone's counting on you to do your part. I think that's a very important part of the of just yeah. business in general. In general. And it was like, okay, I get it. So, But it, it was rewarding. Again, I told you my position is very selfish, very selfish. I have so many rewarding aspects, and that's what I love about Smartland. It's a giving new experience, new day. The techs offer, I love my guys. My guys are just as involved as we are here in the office, mm -hmm. like to be informed, like to be know what's going on, how can they help. So, I, I, I man, <laughs> I love it. What, what are some challenges you face? I mean, are, are there things like uh, employee turnover? Uh, yes. Things like having to know which, which guys are skilled at, at which trades to know where to deploy them throughout our, our yes. big management portfolio? What dive deep into those like what problems have you solved to to mitigate those Ooh, you you have to have find a little knack man because everyone comes in the door with their own talents and gifts own experience own background somebody might be heavy in plumbing somebody might be heavy in hvac and not that they're not willing to learn you have to take the time to just instead of i would send someone if you were a technician my assumption was you could fix it mm -hmm. not true Certain guy for certain jobs. Um, you waste a lot of time and money sending the wrong person to the wrong situation when he, you know his experience is not as high. So you get to learn and you, you ask those uh, research questions. You get to know your guys, hey, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. You get to pairing them up. And that's what I found my number one tool. So if I know a guy is not so strong in one area, but this guy is, spend some time together, guys. Spend some time together. Go out there, get to know each other, build the rapport, share the skills, share the experience. That way that guy can come back who didn't know as much about HVAC and say, hey, you can send me to that now. Let me try. Let me give it a shot. Um, the room for growth is very needed here. In real estate all around, it's an ever-evolving industry. So you're going to continuously learn, 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 learn. I came into the smart land thinking, oh, yeah, I'm their guy. I know what I know about systems. I can be able to help smart land. And got in and was like, whoa, there's a lot I have to learn. There's, it's different. Just because, you know, I've been a field manager before out with these guys working hand in hand in another industry. And I thought because I had that experience, 
that I'll be able to just zoom, take over here, right. that experience, would it doesn't apply. You have to take the time to learn our processes, learn procedures, learn what works and what doesn't work for you and your people. It, it seems like a, a huge key to success, especially like, like we've said before, especially in maintenance, is process and procedure. Mm-hmm. But what happens when it breaks down? It breaks down. <laughs> How do you get back on, on track? Um, stay in the course. Okay. Just persistence. When, when processes and procedures break down, and, and as much as we try for it not to, it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, it w- just think of something as minute as a guy getting sick and needing a couple of days off. It breaks procedure. Right. So you, you, you scramble, but stick persistent, persistent. Keep it on your plate. Keep it in front of you. Keep it focused. Keep it on your mind. Don't let it slip to the wayside and, oh, well, I forgot. You cannot. Not when the processes and procedures fall through. That's when you have to step up and show, hey, I can keep a focus on something and see it through, even though my computer is not working today, even though the Internet went out from the storm, or even though five trees are down and we only have one tree service vendor available. It, stay focused. Absolutely. So, man, I, I don't think it's it's a question whatsoever. We even touched it on the last episode that maintenance is one of the most important parts of real estate operation in general had to learn that i know you're always looking for new talent yeah say i'm a tradesman and i want to come work for smartland when i get to that first interview what are you specifically looking for out of someone like me communication communication strength communication i tell everyone how transparent can you be um if you can communicate well and you're not afraid to speak and use your voice Mm -hmm. you'll go far in maintenance you'll go far in real estate Be able to speak. If you can speak and be transparent, it'll take you a long way. Um, I found that in real estate, a lot of times you take five people in a room, we're nine times out of ten thinking the same thing. Someone has to say it, though. Absolutely. Someone, Someone has to just say, hey, this is not making sense to me. Or, hey, what about this way? And then other brains will get to click in and that energy will get to flowing. And then that's when you get to figuring out, oh, we can do it this way. Have have you ever had somebody that you hired right off the bat who was maybe nervous to use their communication skills that down the road you realized, wow, this person really does a great job of communicating. They just needed to be uh, helped out in the beginning. And then one of our strongest technicians, Max. OK. Um, young. So and when I say young, I'm not picking on him. He came in, he came to his first interview and. His, his youth had him, you know, assured. He was sure of himself, so he didn't have much to say. He's a guy I had to learn. He's a guy that he's going to show you what he can do, show you what he's about. He's not going to talk about it. He, he's just not. His, his approach to it is if we're talking about it, we're wasting time that we can do, be fixing something. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn that not so many, everyone's not going to come in, and their voice, communication is more than just your mouth. You people, eye contact body language, um, outcome, and that's with him. Max, you send him to it. Max is going to get it done. He's Mm -hmm. going to figure it out. He's going to invest himself and come back with a finished product. And it was like, oh, man, where I'm used to urging guys to, hey, let's plan this out. Let's talk this out in the morning debriefing. Let's get a materials list. Let's do this this way. That bores Max. Max is like, hey, let me put it in my head, get it done. Go for it, sir. I love it. Absolutely. I, I think it's pretty easy to communicate with people one-on-one. It's really like all you got to do is pick up the phone, uh, communicate back and forth, tell them what needs to be done, get feedback. How do you communicate to your whole team at once? What are some, Do you have a weekly meeting? Do you have multiple every day? Do you have a meeting? Yes. So what? walk me through that process. We do huddles every morning. Okay. I want the guys to come in. Um, again, from my experience being in their position and being out in the field, being a service guy, I know how um, – what's the word I'm looking for? It can get boring. You can get stagnant. Uh, that's not the word. The – Repetitive. Mm -hmm. It gets real lonely and repetitive some days because you're the only guy in the truck. You're the only guy under the sink. You're the only guy under the car. Whatever you're fixing, you're typically the only guy. You're out there alone. You're alone. 
So that interaction can fuel you, you know. Um, so I, the way I look at it and the way I approach it every day now, guys, give me 15 minutes every morning. Let's talk. Some things are about work. Some things are about the day before. Some mm-hmm. things are, hey, what's going on at home? Sometimes it's, what you have for dinner last night, bro? You enjoy it? You try something new? New restaurant? Taco Tuesday? You know, just given that personal aspect again, um, it really helps with them because they're like, hey, I know I can call Jerome when I'm feeling down throughout the day. Right, so you're, you think that camaraderie goes a long way with the team. Oh, building. yes. Um, that lack of camaraderie has made me leave companies before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, so you, you've been able to take those past experiences yes. and yes. apply them here smartly. Definitely, definitely. That's great. Um, what is something uh, for the viewers at home – when they think about maintenance, what is something that would completely surprise them about the job? <laughs> completely surprise. How much we actually care. Okay. How much we actually care. Um, I tell new applicants when they come in for interview, new hires, one thing that everyone at Smartland has in common is that we understand the things that we do or don't do impact someone daily, someone else's daily life. So we have to care. We have to understand that it's not about just an email being missed. It's not about just a phone call going to voicemail. Someone is reaching out because they need someone to answer. Right. This is their living situation. This is their living situation. Yeah. And the responsibility and the weight that holds, I need everyone coming through the door to understand that. Fantastic. Um, what ways, when, when you leave work at night, are you able to disconnect from from what you did during that day and reset new the next day? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Um, sometimes it's much needed. Sometimes it's it's in a different aspect each time. So there's been times where I've had a very busy day, meetings, tech calls with technicians. It's just been very busy, going, going, going from the, from the time we said start. And I need to get home and release thoughts of work just to depress. Right. Then there are those times where I just can't release the thoughts from work. And it's mm-hmm. not because of stress, it's because of my willingness to be all inclusive, to be involved, to always think about how we can do better. Would you say disconnecting for a little bit helps you once you reconnect? Yes. It's good to take that little bit, that, that little breather, break. Yeah. You, you have to. It's so, it's especially mandatory. Especially in this, especially in this line of work. It's mandatory. Um, a, a good, good friend of mine made me see years ago, and I've been carrying this since he said it. If you don't take care of you, how can you be a service to anyone else? If you, you have to do it for you first. You have to think about your sleeping habits, your eating habits, your workout habits. What are you doing to keep yourself here and of service? So we have to have good habits in ourselves to be able to be a resource to somebody else. Tell me about your personal life. What uh, what gets you up and what gets you going in the morning? What are your external motivations that you I, know, allows you to have such passion for work at Smartland? I am a workout meditation buff. Okay. So I am so big into physical and whole health that you wouldn't believe. Um, I am a hothead. I like to react. I'm a Leo at heart. That's my sign. So... I get up and, man, I work out for 30, 45 minutes. I meditate for about 15 minutes. Are you able to tell a difference on the days that you don't do that versus oh, the days yes. that you do? Yes, especially here at Smartland. Yes. Especially here at Smartland. Um, my guys have gotten used to it, too. The guys will come in, and you know how you'll have that coworker that says, hey, you had your coffee yet? Now it's, hey, you meditated yet? And it's like, eh, yes, I have. Thank you. And it's like, okay, you seem a little feisty today. And it's like, okay, but um, that's me in a nutshell. I love self-help books. I mm-hmm. love learning. That Learning turns me on, bro. Yeah. I, it makes me so happy because I, I like to compare myself to a tree, so it's about growth. I believe if you're not growing, that's when you start dying. So let's keep going. Man, Jerome, <laughs> thank you for your time today. Appreciate really it, man. Appreciate thank you, you for having a, me here. Some really good insight. Yes, man. I, I um, hope to be back. Yes, man. We will definitely have you back. All right, cool. I promise you that. That's all for episode three. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all things Smartland.